In today's video, I am going to show you how to quickly draw a PCR append of tube using skills you have learned up till this video on the playlist. Just look how beautiful it is. I have gone through many graphic design books and have studied how to use the skills for academic publications. And I have chosen to share the skills with you. And this is why. I do not wish that you go through same difficulties like others do. And are you not able to do it yourself after watching this tutorial? Do not worry. I will share the final graphic tool with you. Of course, there are many other advanced tools to achieve the same result like we are going to achieve here. But I wish in this video to show you how easy it is already with the skills you know so far following this playlist. You can easily start by using a reference image. This can be a picture of the object you took, like a beaker, a test tube, an append of tube, or some other image you screenshot off the web. I have one I made here, and we'll pull that out as a guide. If you have an image, pull it over onto Inkscape. Then, rescale by clicking on the object to have handles as you see here. Then, by holding down the control key to constrain or maintain the aspect ratio and squeezing the object to a size you like. Next, we will produce an additional layer on which we will draw our object using this one on layer 1 as a guide. To create a new layer, go to Layer, Layers or select Shift Ctrl L to have the layers palette as shown up here. And as we can see, we have layer 1. You may be wondering what a layer is. In graphic software like Inkscape, Illustrator, GIMP, Photoshop, a layer is used to describe the different levels at which we can place an object or image or their component parts. As such, we can define layers, draw different aspects of an image on them, and stack or merge different parts of an object when creating an image. Here we will use layers to spatially separate a template we wish to use for a drawing from the new drawing so we do not mix up things. Now, everything we have so far posted or drawn on the page is on layer 1. We could select the eye symbol here to make the object disappear and select it again to let the object come back. We can also lock away the object from our mouse or sticky guidelines by selecting the padlock here. Most importantly, we can set the opacity here below to be lighter so we have a shadowy reference outline we can use as guide for our drawing. We can create a new layer by selecting this plus sign down here. And when we do that, we have this prompt asking for layer name. I will leave it as layer 2. And notice you can position it above or below the current layer. When done, select Add and we will have the new layer. Notice that each layer comes with the eye symbol and the lock you can use to control visibility and access to a layer. In this example, we are going to use just two layers. In real life, however, most illustrators will use many layers to hold different aspects of an object. Apart of here above, you have access to the layer down here in the status bar. Now, make sure layer 1 is locked. Then select layer 2 and make sure it is the active layer. We can now draw around on layer 2 using the object on layer 1 as reference without the temptation of altering the reference object in layer 1 or without it being on our way. Select the Bezier pen now and set the mode to create B spline path. This will help us to easily draw the rounded corners we see here below. If you wish to know how to use this tool, please watch my Bezier Pen tutorial. I have a link for you in the description. 
So we are going to start by drawing from here above and going carefully down to the tip of the tube somewhere around the middle, then double clicking to end the line path. This way we would have drawn one side of the tube. Continuing to draw around is not good practice as we will never be able to make this other half very symmetrical. To have a nice symmetry, we are simply going to select this part we've drawn, pull it to the side so we see what is going on in the next step, take Ctrl D to duplicate, then hold the Alt key down and left mouse click and pull the duplicate over to reflect it and have a nice symmetry. We can now use the arrowhead keys on our keyboard to align the two objects finally by holding Alt while using the arrowhead keys which is going to make the objects move finely. But for our purpose, both objects are fairly close apart of a small gap we may have here below. This is usually not seen unless we zoom into the object. But now notice that by clicking this object and its reflection, we notice there are two objects. Let us go on now to close the gap by connecting the end nodes. We can do that by selecting the objects, hitting N to access the nodes and then selecting these two nodes here below with the node tool and choosing Join selected end nodes with a new segment up here below in the tool control bar. The tip of our tube is now connected. Notice now that clicking on the object shows the two objects have meshed to one since we connected the end nodes. We now have the bottom part of the tube and wish to create the top. I will show you one way to draw the top so you have a two-dimensional tube. However, there is a second way to draw the top and the cover so you have a near three-dimensional effect. This can be achieved by adding an other skill set by using composite shapes and the path effect editor in addition to the skills you've seen so far here. I will give that as an assignment, but if I have 5 requests to do that here, I am going to make a tutorial. Next, I am going to pull vertical guidelines to sit on the left and right side of the rectangle by left mouse clicking on the left ruler and pulling towards the page. Also, I'm going to create horizontal guidelines to sit on the upper and lower parts of this upper tube. Now select the Bezier pen and set the mode to create regular Bezier path. This will help us to draw the straight lines and corners we see here. Bring the cursor towards the line intersection here till you see handle to guide intersection. Then click to create a first node. Hold the control key down. Move to the next intersection. Click. Then to the next. Click and to this one click and finally to the origin where you double click to end the path. Go now and click on the eye symbol on layer 1 to toggle its visibility. Awesome! Next lock up layer 2 by selecting the lock here and make it invisible by selecting the eye to toggle its visibility. Then open up layer 1 Select your reference object and take Ctrl D to duplicate. Pull the duplicate to the side and rotate it so the cover lies horizontally. Go now again and lock up layer 1 and continue to draw the cover on layer 2. To do this, begin by pulling vertical guidelines to sit on the left and right side of this modular rectangle by left mouse clicking on the left ruler and pulling towards the page. Also create horizontal guidelines to sit on the upper and lower part of this upper tube. Just like before, bring the cursor towards the line intersection here till you see handle to guide intersection. Then click to create a first node. 
hold the control key down, move to the next intersection, click, then to the next, click and go on to this one, click and finally back to the origin where you double click to end the path. You can now go ahead to repeat the same procedure to draw this lower part. I am going to grab the guidelines from up here and bring them to fit this lower part and draw its outline just like before. Now select both objects and make sure they are well aligned. To do that, go to Object, Align and Distribute and align both along the same vertical axis. Select both now and take Ctrl K to combine. Now pull the combined top and align it to sit over the reference top we see here on the left. To do that, I will pull it here using the selection tool, click on it once, grab it with one of these handles and rotate it so that it sits perfectly on the reference object. If necessary, adjust the line width so that it is the same like for the other parts of the object. Toggle the visibility of layer 1 away to see how beautiful your tube has become. It is taking a good shape, isn't it? Congratulations! Now we need to draw this joint. Bring guidelines to sit at the boundaries of the joint. Select the Bezier tool and make sure the mode is set at Create Regular Bezier Path. Trace the lower line of the connecting joint by carefully clicking on one end and on the middle part and finally double clicking at the end to create a line path. I am going to pull this first trace to the bottom. Then I will repeat the same procedure on the upper line. Once done, I will pull both lines to sit together with their ends aligned. This now forms the connecting joint between lid and tube. I will now toggle away the visibility of layer 1 and then select both lines and hit end to access the nodes. Then I'm going to select the end nodes of both lines and go to join selected end nodes with new segment up here on the tool control bar. And the next thing we can do is to click on the line and verify whether the line width is the same like for the other objects. If not, adjust it under the fill and stroke tab just like before. Next, I will bring the connection to sit between cover and tube and verify if it is sitting fine. If it is very short or not well aligned, adjust it. To know how to adjust the lengths of the lines, please watch my Bezier Pen tutorial. So I'm going to try to do that here a little and what I'll do is to bring a guideline to sit exactly on this upper part of the tube and then use the note tool to adjust how far the joint goes. For this one connecting the cover, you may wish to select and rotate the tube so you use a guideline to adjust it too. It seems fine for me now. So I am going to select the connecting joint and come up here and choose lower selection one step below or lower selection to the bottom so that it does not bump out and make our drawing look funny. When you are done with drawing your tube, select layer 1 and go to this minus sign down here and hit delete. Now you may wish to ask yourself why we go through all this instead of using the trace bitmap option which we are going to see in some of the next videos. The reasons are simple. Here we have drawn a modular object we can use as a basis to create several other objects for different scenarios. For instance, a closed tube, an open tube just by pulling aside the lid. Secondly, using the trace bitmap function will produce a compact object with lots of nodes taking up a lot of memory space. And in such a case, pulling the object apart to create other types of objects may be challenging if we do not have this skill. As usual, you can find a copy of this graphic in a link in the description down below for your work. 
And if you have been using the previous videos to learn how to draw figures, please do comment below and share your experience with those who are trying to do that just now. If this is your first time here, I will like to have you give a thumbs up below and subscribe because this video series is all about helping you to effectively illustrate and communicate your research results or work. And this is going to be a game changer in your study and work and will influence it positively. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.